Good morning and welcome again to the Veterans Forum. Today is the 29th of April, the year 2009. The program you're about to see is a follow-up, if you will, to the special that we did the 1st of October last at Pittsfield International Airport, where they had the Collins Air Group combine old vintage planes to us that were brand new 60 years ago. And uh, they had several of the fellows who made commitments to come and do the show again here a little bit more ease and not as much rain. Today, we're going to do a show with Mike Rocha, though I pronounce it improperly, but when he gets there, he'll give you the full word, okay? As you know, this is part of the National Congress Veterans History Project, where we're inviting all guys and gals who served in any branch in any of the wars, if they can and will, to come and share those experiences with us so that that part will never be lost to history. Today, we're at the studios doing another interview, and I would like to introduce our guest today. Mike, would you introduce yourself, please, and spell your last name. Well, thank you, Bob. I want to thank you, first of all, for having me on, and thank the staff that's putting this thing on. And uh, my name is Mike Russell, like you say, and I was born here in Pittsfield, Mass. And uh, I went to public schools here. And growing up, I was uh, I lost my mother when I, she was nine years or nine, not, you know, nine, I was nine years mm -hmm. old, and uh, from there on, I was passed around to different relatives to live with. It was you know rough times at that time. Oh. And uh, as I grew up, I uh, lived with my uncle as a rule at uh, later on, and then when I was old enough, I joined the National Guards. No. Oh. And then I was with the National Guards for quite a while, and we were doing different things along the East Coast. And we were trained. I had an armory here, as a matter of fact, on Pitts, in Pittsfield. We used to drill once a week. Tell us about that, because when we were talking before, you had kind of a little fun while you were doing it, uh, as far as you being able to shoot and all that good stuff. Yeah, we, we, we had, they had a, they formed a rifle team while we were there. Of course, we used to drill, like I say, and in the cellar, they used to have a range, a little range. They used to use 22 rifles, and uh, they had me down doing qualifications. They had you qualify with small bore mm -hmm. rifles, they yeah. called it. And I was an expert. I used to get to shoot. Uh, I did a lot of shooting. My uncle taught me. And uh, he was an avid outdoor hunter and sportsmanship and all that. So I made expert with the thing. We had the good shot. So then. They formed this rifle team, the National Guards did, and we used to go around the state in the regimental shooting things with different companies, you mm -hmm. know, Company M, Company I. We, used to, we were called here to four different uh, groups, the Company I from Pittsfield, Company M from Adams, they had a regimental thing, and they all had different rifle teams, so we went down to had a tournament. Were you and guys we, pretty good? And we won the title down there. I and everything. just happened to mention that. Yeah. yeah. But then, as you say, we, had, we went from the Army. We used to go up on West Street, which they had a rifle range, and we had the 306 bolt action mm -hmm. rifle at that time. Boom, boom. Yeah, and I qualified that expert. I got pretty darn good with the gun and everything, with the very, very good shot with the, with the rifles. And then we used to, uh, when uh, I got Trent, when we went, the war broke out and everything. Uh, when I was oh, now way back, when when did you join the guard? I know we have the dates are on here, but uh, when you oh, were just a guards, young kid right oh, after school. Oh, when I joined the guards, I, it was 1937 when I was about 18, 17, okay. 18 years old, and uh, I had a friend who was in it, and he teased me and teased me and said, "Make yourself a few bucks because there wasn't much money going around in those days with the depression time." So I said, all right. So then I joined with them, and we used to go up, like I say, then and drill once a week and everything. And then uh, where would we go from there? Well, well, then as the guards, we used to just go up and train, you know, uh, up in the mountain there well, off of West Street and everything. And then we would be, tra in the summer, we'd go away for two weeks training. Mm -hmm. We'd go to Camp Edwards at that time. Oh, down the Cape. Yeah. yeah. And we used to train a couple of weeks down there every summer. And it was a three-year term, a three-year enlistment. Yeah. 
So then it, as uh, it, it wore off and everything, we uh, I resigned up again, and we and then they sent the guards down to uh, along the east coast. I guess we went down to South Carolina, North Carolina, drilling, training, field training, because the war had broke out. Okay, all right. That this was after 1941. Then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then uh, we did like a submarine control with the guards down in Florida. Went along the beaches and stuff to check for anything coming in from the ocean and lights at night. If oh. people had them turned on or off, then make them knock their lights out at night. So on the houses and all that and everything. So then we moved back up into Georgia and doing more field training. And then uh, the uh, uh, the commander come out and told us they were looking for men in the Air Force because they were short gunners and air, well, short Everybody. Air, air crew, you know, pilots, gunners, everything. So they said, anybody wants to volunteer, and he says, we can send your name into the air base at Columbia, South Carolina. And he says, and see if they'll take you. Yeah. So we so did that. in the draft. <laughs> yeah, so we, we done that, and uh, five of us did. And then they finally called us and said, we'll take the whole five of you. Oh, okay. So we bounced out of there and we went over to South Carolina and uh, we uh, they accepted us. So and then you transferred officially into the Air Force? Yeah. The Army Air Corps, not Air, the... Army Air Corps at right that on. time. Okay. Yeah, the Army Air Corps it was called. And then we trained there for a while and, and they, <laughs> then they said, well, we got to send you down to Myrtle Beach. South Carolina for combat or the air training, you know, okay. with the turret and all this, and get used to the airplanes and do what, which I never flew in my life, but never was in an airplane. <laughs> so we got down to Myrtle Beach and uh, they took us up and out over the ocean and they would have towed a target with the oh, airplanes yeah. and got us into the turrets and had us go up and fire away at the targets and stuff. So it wasn't much because you could hit that easy. It would target and fly in the back of the plane. So then uh, we stayed there for quite a while and everything until we, our training was over. Mm -hmm. Then they sent us back to Columbia Air Base in South Carolina. Is that where you found up your crews? And that's where we hung around for a while, yeah. And then they gave it to the pilots and everybody. The pilots would come from there. They didn't train with us there. But they, wherever they come from, I don't know. Okay. But anyhow, they all assembled at uh, the air base and they'd pick out their crews because they had already been trained, uh, you know, mm -hmm. around here. So they picked us out and I got onto a crew and uh, we stayed, we trained together then after that for quite, for quite a while here in South Carolina. So then after we got our training in, they sent us across country to El Paso, Texas. And we did some more air training. Of course, we trained around here, the area here, but then we went down to South Car or, um, El Paso and we stayed there until we got orders. To, we were ordered to on our way overseas. Okay. Now, in that training, did uh, you have any particular uh, specialties as far as what you were selected to do or you volunteered to do as, as your position on the ship, or the airplane? The only thing I had the responsibility was is, is, uh, you know, uh, taking care of my guns and learning all okay, about you're the, the turret gunner then. Yeah, the turret. Okay. I was in a turret gunner, and I had just had to worry about my guns. I didn't have to worry about the rest of anything else. But I mean, just you know, okay. make sure the gun, take them apart, put them together. Of course, we did that in training school oh, yeah. too. Blindfold every other and day. All the <laughs> damn thing. Yeah. So that was all. Then, like I say, more or less, it was just getting used to the airplane. I mm. guess the whole crew was because we were all. You How know, did you react to the airplane? Oh, I was very, very, very scared at first, you know, about it, and a little nervous about stuff and everything, but uh, it comes to you. Okay, really, now, do you have any uh, special training, for example, of bailing out, the, uh, for, uh, hitting the silk, as they say? No, we, we, we wore chest chutes in the airplane okay. and everything. And, but you uh, never used it? No, we never, as they said, you know, you weren't flying enough to use it, but I mean, it, it was there. It was there, yeah. yeah okay. I guess it was just to give you encouragement or what, I don't <laughs> that know. That warm feeling. Yeah, I have that feeling <laughs> of it, yeah. 
but we never used them, no. Okay. For some time. I use it for a pillow sometimes. They were flying along, on. laying sit on or something. So, But anyhow, after we, you know, like I say, after we got over to El Paso, Texas, they had to rig our plane up, and there was two other planes that flew over with us. There was three of us, and the 25s that flew across, and they were put wing tanks on them, okay, for extra money. everything else, and we got ready. We were going to fly from El Paso to... Uh, Hawaii to Hickam Field. Oh, that was the order. In LA or along the West Coast? Just no, we just come right out of El Paso, oh, Texas, okay. across. And uh, we had the wing, like I say, the wing tanks on it, and we were supposed to land at orders at Hickam Field over mm -hmm. in Hawaii. So then we took off and flew over to Hickam and uh, took about a print there, I think 10 or 11 hours, I guess. It's a long flight. It was, way it was on a the long rear flight. end. Yeah, it was a long flight. And anyhow, we got over there and it was <clears throat> landed over there in Hickam Field. It was pretty well messed up at, over there at that time. Yeah, it was just after Pearl Harbor yeah. was bombed at that time. So, when you, uh, excuse me, but when you're flying into Pearl, did you see any of that wreckage? Oh, yeah. You could see real feel the, it. This, yeah. this isn't a game anymore. No, that's right. You could see it. Uh, oh my God! There was still oil on the water. There was a ship's part of it. There was, you know, it was a mess. Hickam Field or Hickam uh, Barracks, where the fellows were and everything. They got all when they strafed them. They showed all the, the bullet holes and everything that went through there. And the airfield itself was a mess because the airplanes got knocked out and everything. That worked. They had them all in a row over yeah, there. Targets. Yeah, and they used them for targets and got them. Oh, well, anyhow, we stayed there for, I don't know, not too long, maybe a couple of days or so. And then they, we took off from there, and we went to um, a city, uh, I can't think of it now, from there in Australia. Port Mosby? No, that was later. Oh, okay. We went from Hawaii to Australia. Mm -hmm. And then we landed uh, in Australia, and then we were at... Uh, uh, I can't think of the name of this town, but it, it went, then we moved from there down to Townsville, Australia. Mm -hmm. Is that where you found up your real crew? Our crew were together yeah. all at this time. We had orders, our own orders. They gave us a, our official bag and stuff and carry our, all our personal orders in them bags ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we were ordered to certain places yeah. to check in at. Yep. So we went from one place to the other, you know, like in Townsville and stuff. So. We stayed in Townsville for a while, and they took our pilot away and sent him to Port Moresby, and that's where they were stationed at that time, the 348 uh, uh, Squadron, mm -hmm. 5th Air Force that I was assigned to. <clears throat> so anyhow, they uh, took him, sent him ahead for combat uh, experience to go fly a few missions with the oh, trained the pilots field, yeah. that were all there. They were there already. And we had a hang behind over in Townsville. So I'd say maybe there were maybe uh, three, four days a week or something like that. So then he come back and he picked us up. And then uh, we went, uh, no, he didn't pick him up, I'm sorry. Uh, he was still gone. We went from Townsville by uh, PBY, 2Y house uh, a boat or a plane. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Pontoon plane. And they took us from Townsville to uh, Espirito Santos, an island. There was no airfield on there or nothing. It was just a Quite stop a off, you know, like some kind of a stop off yeah. of some kind. And uh, we stayed there for a couple of days. It was just jungle. There was nothing, you know. So we stayed there for a couple of days. And then from there, they took us by boat again. When the airplane, the boat on it, and uh, flew to Port Moresby. And then from Port Moresby, that's when the beginning of combat began. Yeah, that you officially joined the show. I started to the get show, into yeah. the real show. Now, yeah. let, me, let me interrupt for a second. Uh, when you were, if you will say, hanging around loose, did you have any special training? Like, uh, for example, we were talking earlier about the survival in the jungle training. Uh, mm. What about the bit about the monkeys? You want to talk about that at all? You know, uh, if you're down, if the way I understand it, if you're shot down or get down, watch what the monkeys eat, and then you can eat that. 
yeah. and if things get real bad, yeah. you can eat the monkey. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing was wasted. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they, uh, we had a, there's one good thing about what they did to us over there. I mean, they were very thoughtful on some of that stuff. They gave us like the survival book. They gave us a book with dialects in it if you could, well, could you, talk you to the natives while you yeah. were down and everything. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the natives as a rule were friendly, fr were pretty friendly because the Aussies, the Australians were in jungle fighting for longer than we were. Okay. They, they were, the way for They you. were real good jungle fighters, mm -hmm. those Aussies were. And uh, they used to got the natives, so they were friendly to them, to, to the us, and everybody used to call us Joes. Well, G.I. Right. Joe. Hey, we were Joe, G.I. Yeah. Joe. So we went along with that, you know, and everything. So, but, uh, And then they gave us silk maps to go by, you know, well, the area cool, yeah. and stuff, and they'd give you, you know, different directions which mm -hmm. to look for and everything. So we had those, all that. So you're well prepared. Well prepared if we went down or anything. So that was a story on that, and then uh, we we uh, start moving jungle or or uh, island, island hopping. Uh, then so from Port Moresby we flew some missions out of Port Moresby, and uh, as we moved along we went from there to Nadzab, and uh, for some unknown reason we got to Nadzab like you say we do we uh, we were called the treetop terrors. Oh, and, low uh, level. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> And our jobs mostly was strafing. Okay. We did hardly any high, high altitude bombing. It was all strafing. That's kind uh, of scary, uh, though, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, it was all strafing job. The fifth air, I mean, our group was the 348th and our whole group, you know, there was strafing. We did a little bit of bombing, but not much. And uh, from there, we kept going to different targets along New Guinea and that area. <coughs> Then they moved us up to Hollandria from Nadzad, and we started from going from there, the same thing, and we were hitting these islands in the Celebes and yeah, thousands of them. Oh, there's thousands of different, oh, thousand different islands and stuff. So we were doing strafing jobs and dropping parafrag bombs, and that was it mostly the time. We didn't carry bombs hardly at all. Then when they did have some big raids, they'd have a major target to hit. Like they did they, they Jefferson. The whole wing going yeah, up. Yeah, they, they have Jefferson Isle, and they had a, quite a few of them there, different islands there where the Japs were really built up. Okay. And they would hit them with B 24s with the 25s. Of course, they have fighter cover. We had P 38 for fighter cover, and P 47s as a rule. The 51s weren't over there, the P 51s mm -hmm. at that time. So we would hit big targets, we'd go in a big group, but mostly our whole major things while I was there was uh, mostly strafing. Yeah. We did a lot of strafing. Now you showed us before when we talked about it there, you had a couple of photographs of, uh, as your pilot would call back to you, he said, we're going to take in a run and then hit your camera. You had a camera to record. Well, what yes, there was a camera installed underneath the, or the, the belly of the airplane mm -hmm. where our, the turret was more or less or yeah. something. And he would call back and say, "Turn the camera on." And we most all the missions he would we would have all the planes didn't have it. You know the the, the camera. But our we, our plane did have it. He was the, more or less the leader, and then we had wingmen, and mm -hmm. they would put it on the leader of the plane. Yeah. And the wingmen didn't have it, the wing planes. <clears throat> so we'd turn the camera on as we're going over these targets and stuff. So they had a lot of, that's how they got a lot of these pictures and stuff. Yeah. So uh, that was one thing there. So then, what else? What are we well, you told us one time before that you had one real big raid, you called it, and uh, it, it kind of shook you when you came back in well, Black we, Thursday or Black Sunday or something. Oh yeah. Well, that happened while we were at New uh, Nadzab. We were going out one day, and that was a big raid. They were going to up in the northern Philippines, someplace a Perry Aerodrome, I think they called it. And it was a, bringing in a lot of, they were getting ready for a big run. Their fighters, their fighter planes and bombers and the whole works, I guess. And anyhow, they it was a, sent out a big mission on it. So all the planes took off and everything. And, and we were, had other uh, missions also. They sent the heavy bombers and the fighter planes on that mission, I guess. Then they sent the 25s 
here a whole load of 25s to another island and the you know all over this thing mm -hmm. broke oh, us yeah. up into different sections yeah so anyhow there was I don't know how many planes there was up in the air at that time I mean on different missions going everywhere well what happened was the weather broke and uh, they had an awful awful storm or an awful I don't know what you call it her hurricane or typhoon, typhoon, or whatever. typhoon or whatever it was yeah. the sky turned it was just like night just like black and uh coming back from their missions it had they got to their mission all right but then coming back from their mission this weather so when it broke and a lot of planes there was over 30 some planes got lost not from combat but from the, weather, the weather just the weather alone and they just just lost. We lost uh, uh, our, our two wingmen coming back on the 25 from our mission that we were sent on. And uh, as we we're coming down, there was a place called Markham Valley. We used to use that as a route, like to come back to NADSAP. Usually, every time we went out, we'd go up what they call Markham Valley in New Guinea. That would be our start of our runs. Okay. Then we spread out and go to these other little islands. J Pen or different islands, and just send a group. We'd break up, mm -hmm. send three planes here, three planes there, all strafing and doing jobs like that. And uh, we were coming back, and it, it was awful. It was an awful ride. My God, we were, I don't know how we ever, how ever got back. But you did it. But we come back to New Gat and uh, Nadzab, and we didn't know what was going on. But when we landed, it was, it was weird. Airfield was empty. Usually, there's planes. Some that had don't take off. Some that would take yeah, off. Reserves well, and what have you. They were there. It just was weird. It seemed like it was empty. Usually, it was filled with B-24s and P-38s, fighter planes, mm -hmm. and different things. There was nothing there. It was empty. So anyhow, we wonder what happened. And the word got out that uh, they were lost, and they were waiting for contact from them to come back. And they got no word on them. Got no word on them. And they counted them up. I guess it was 30, 30, 31 or 32 lost from wow. that. And they called it Black Sunday from it that. It was a black day. Well, then later on, we one of them, <clears throat> luckily, one of our wingmen reported in. He, they oh, finally got there him. was a survivor. Yeah, so he had uh, Stapleton, I think his name was, and he was with a crew. And I used to get a letter from his radio man. He lived out in California. But uh, they landed on some island where there was a missionary or whatever you call it, you yeah. know, their station. And none of them got hurt. What happened was they explained what happened to them. They just just couldn't, you know, see or what was going on. And he just brought the plane down near uh, like an open spot on a, like a beach. It wasn't a beach, but an open okay, spot. Yeah. And he belly flopped it in there. And, and they were, none of them got hurt too seriously, just banged up a little bit. And they were stayed there. Well, then they got got word that they that they were okay. Okay, they could hustle back home. Again. So then they brought them back home again. They went and picked them up and brought them back to Nadjab again. But we never heard from the others. Oh. So that was a that was one of a real real serious uh, mission. That one when there was. Well, you were also one rather serious mission, if you will. The time that you got some frag ups with the. Oh yeah, well, that talk was. Talk about that one, if you will. Yeah, well, there was another thing that they got from intelligence. We used to have briefings on all these missions before we went on the briefings, you know, mostly. Mm -hmm. And they said that there was, uh, Japs were building up a big, ready to get, come after us in, in uh, Jefferson Isle, it was called. So uh, they sent a whole bunch of us out. The 24s were in on that, and all of us were, it was, they were bombing and all that, the 25s, and it was going to be a big, Big, big mission altogether. So we went over and we hit it, and uh, as we were, it was air, air battles and everything there. The Japs had planes there up in the air, and they were going at it left and right. It was, you, you, up in the turret, you could see all the action. It was all around you, ack, mm -hmm. ack, like all bees flying. around the honey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was, it was real, real, real active up in the sky, and uh, so we had good fighter cover. We really did. And uh, anyhow, it's, we made our run. We made one big run straight down through and uh, come back and made a turn, come back to make a second run on with parafrag bombs and strafing. 
and the big bombers had already dropped. We were hitting the, the anti-aircraft guns was our mission to okay. knock them out. They, had, them, they out. had them in different corners and the, we were supposed to go on our plane was and then they'd give another plane to different. They gave us different things when you went in. They didn't have all, you all at shooting at the mm -hmm. same thing. Mm -hmm. You go here and you take out that one, you take out this and that's how they arrange things. Yeah. Then the heavy bombers would drop the airfields on the planes and stuff that were parked there, a lot of them that didn't get off, and they'd bomb the airfield, the 24s. And uh, we were leaving, uh, just coming back, just coming across the second run, and I, I don't know what happened. We got walloped. We got right there. A big boom. Yeah, right? yeah, oh my God, uh, like boom. A, a whole dome on the turret come flying off, and. Uh, and I was wham, the first thing I knew, I wasn't in there. I wasn't in the seat anymore, and I would knock to the get floor. The, get the floor of the bulkhead. Yeah, yeah, and knocked right in the floor and on the floor of the thing. And, and the lifeboat section, we had in our planes a place oh, where the life they, raft. The life raft, they yeah. had a section where they yeah. kept men and everything. That got walloped, and, they, and it knocked that thing flying. It inflated, it went flying through the air. And that was gone. So the plane got really walloped good. It and you it, did it, too, it, I yeah, believe. Yeah, oh God, yeah. So so then as the, the, the pilot was having a hell of a time there at front there, because <laughs> and uh, they were still getting the fire and hack hack at us and uh, shooting from the ground at us. And we got the hell out of there and uh, then one engine went out on us, got hit. Uh -huh. So we had the one engine gone and the whole top of the thing there. And, and I had a laugh because it wasn't funny, but my radio man went up front and he back it up. Mike's been hit. He's bleeding all over. Mike's been hit. Well, that's so, you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so I got up. I was, I was dizzy for a while, but I got up. And all I was interested, I said, "Where the hell's my, where the hell's my glasses?" I kept reaching for my. We used to get. They issued us a yeah. pair of sunglasses. So. Yeah, it was all right. I got up there and I started, I could see the blood and everything, but I didn't, I didn't feel it. I, I said, I feel all right and everything, okay. so I knew I was all right because it was nothing broke or nothing or anything. Yeah, so. but you were nailed. Yeah. So then I finally come to it to my senses, and uh, but he says, and then the pilot called back, Mike, how are you? And I said, I'm, I'm all right. I says, I guess. I says, I feel all right. He, and I, he says, well, he says, we, Start throwing some stuff out back there, he told the radio man and me. That, that, yeah, that, lighten the load? He said, I'm going to have to ditch. And I said, well, you're going to have to ditch. He says, yeah, I think. I said, well, I, I, you know, I can't, you know, it's the ocean. We were, on, we were going over the ocean mm. because we were at the land there. And uh, I said, I can't swim. He said, don't ditch. <laughs> I said, don't, don't ditch. I said, I can't swim. And he said, well, we got to bring it down. He says, uh, so he says, I'll try. He says, I, I think I can make an island called Wad Key, he says, I think. He says it's controlled by the Aus Australians, Austria, Aussies, he, yeah. we called them Aussies. And I think I can make it there. I said, oh, good, to myself. So he did. So we made it there and we got the plane down and everything all right. And uh, they checked me out there and everything. And it was just superficial things. And they dug a few pieces. They used to have little pieces and everything in there. Yeah. But I had one big yeah. chunk. You that, show them that. But that's the one that missed me, this one in here. Oh, I can open it. Yeah. Get a good shot of that. That's an attention getter. <laughs> that's the one that hit me. It didn't hit me. Didn't hit me. So uh, I was very fortunate on that. But uh, we stayed there for, I don't know, maybe a week, I would say, there and everything. Oh, oh my God, I'll tell you. Yeah, on the ground there, uh, uh, the, the Aussies, had, when they took it over, there was, oh, did you ever smell a human? I know human did. Uh, bodies, human yeah. bodies. Oh, well, what You'll never open. forget that stink. Yeah, it wasn't buried or nothing. They were no, just laying there rotten. yet. Yeah, rotten in there. Oh, my God, I was glad to get out of there. That was awful, that smell and everything. So anyhow, that was our thing, and then they finally, they all just picked us up after there for a while, and they brought us back to, uh, to where we were at? Uh, Hollandia? Hollandia, uh, that's where we were stationed at that. So that was one of the things. Then another mission I was on, we were up in the Philippines, and this plane, we heard plane, this train was coming along the tracks there in Irving, so I said, well, we're gonna knock that out. The pilot oh. said, well, we'll go down and strafe that. 
and our two wingmen. There was three of us on. We always traveled in threes. Mm, yeah. So he was cap our, our pilot was the captain there, Captain Nutting. And uh, he said, we'll, we'll take a strafing job on it. So we strafed it, made our run and strafed it. And then the other planes did too. And then we went, made a circle, strafed it again. And uh, wham, all of a sudden the plane, the, the train stopped and the steam, you could see the steam must have hit the boilers or something. It could be, yeah. It stalled it anyhow, it stalled it anyhow. So we turned around, we made another run, and the third run we made on the damn thing, it blew up. Wham! So it must have been ammunition, I don't know what else. What else? You did a good job. And it really rocked the airplane. We come right in on it low, and he let go with the strafing, and the other planes did too, and boom, it went up in the air, and the whole thing. So you're flying through the debris and, as well? Yeah, yeah, and that's a rock the plane there. <laughs> So we got that, knocked that, that thing out anyhow. So that was one of our successful yeah. missions, if you wanted to call it yeah. that. So They're all good if you can walk away yeah, from them. Yeah, so now we were all right. We didn't get, we didn't, you know, they, we didn't get nobody, uh, okay. nothing, no return fire at us. I think it just happened to be luckily that we, that was coming along and we got a whack at it. The target of convenience. We just were coming back from another target that we were on. We just got through strafing up above on another target. But as we were coming back, we spotted the train, so we get, we get one after that. So they told us to anything, you know, and it gave it, strafe it out, knock it out. So we done that. So we got back on that from that mission. Then my pilot, would they had this seventy-five millimeter cannon on one of our ships. Oh, the nose mount. Yeah, yeah, with the nose mount on it. We had a lot of models kept coming over as the war was progressing. Yeah. They kept re bringing up different models of airplanes. I was on, I don't know, four different uh, models. Well, this one had the 75 millimeter cannon in it. And they had the Japs were sneaky. They had these little fishing boats and they'd, they'd make out that they were just out there fishing and this and that, you know, and then they were carrying supplies and ammunition in them. And uh, we didn't know that at the time, but I mean, they, the intelligence did. So we told we were told to go go and they'd give us targets to go hit. They'd have know that where they were mm -hmm. coming and where they were in these coves yeah. and so. So we were going along and one one on one of our missions and a pilot our pilot happened to with the five, five, seventy five millimeter cannon we had it on the plane and well he we were all green at it. We didn't know nothing about the cannons, you know, so he, that was one of his first trips with firing the damn thing. So he was firing the damn thing along. I got a picture here where he was missing. Then finally he whacked it, and it blew up. It had ammunition on it or something. So it just blew up, got all on fire and everything, and it sunk. Wow. So he got credit. It was on the records that he got credit for knocking out a one of the one of them with the cannon. It all adds up. Yeah. So then the other ones there that uh, we were on, they fired it on how many times, different things at the ships and stuff. It worked, it, you know, but it wasn't that good. Well, I was told that uh, when they first started firing it, the recoil was such oh, it almost but, stops oh, yeah. you like you're flying into a, uh, yeah. a wall. Well, the thing was it would loosen the rivets on the plane and everything in the nose of the plane and mm -hmm. the plane itself, and the maintenance men would have to Tighten them all, all up. All up and fix it up again and everything. The, the, the recoil from the re percussion from it, you know, and everything else. And it was a hard thing because he had so many other things to do up front, oh, the yeah. pilot. Then they put that on to him. I don't know how he handled all the guns that were on it. He had the 850s or, you know, the 850s in the front and everything else. Then he had to worry about firing a cannon. Of course, he had a navigator, I guess. We had the navigator always flew with us. and. Uh, he would help him, I yeah. guess, up front there. Yeah, I don't know. Double know. duty. Yeah, and then the, and the, the and flight engineer would have to uh, load the cannon from in back because it went right through underneath the pilot, and it was in back of him where the breech of the uh -huh. cannon, which was a big long barrel on it, and he'd have to load them. Thing. I guess we carried twelve of those big, twelve, I think it was, or something like that. Anyhow, those Iraq with them in. And it would fire him, you know, yeah. but it was, didn't work out. No. So. Uh, what was your last mission? Do you remember that? Because you had what fifty missions, and then they'd ground you or something yeah, like that. Yeah. 
My last one was it was a long one. It was up to a Perry Aerodrome again. They went up there a couple of times there. It was way up in the northern part of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And that was our last mission. It was a quite a, oh, it was a long trip. And, my, and uh, they had to, it was mostly the uh, uh, fighter planes they were bringing in. They were loading up with pl uh, fighter planes and stuff up there. They were who, the Japanese? Japanese. Yeah. And uh, they did, found out that they had built this uh, airdrome up. They called it a Perry Airdrome or something in the northern Philippines. And they were coming in there. and. Uh, so they sent us up there to strafe the hell out of that and drop parafrag bombs and everything. We didn't have the heavy bombers. We just sent us up to 25s up there to uh, to uh, strafe the hell out of it and, and knock, see if we could knock off the planes before they got off the ground. It was going to be like a surprise yeah. thing because it was a, quite a ride. And they didn't think, you know, Jeff probably didn't think we were going to go that last far. That long, yeah. yeah. Like Doolittle and his boys. Yeah, way back yeah it was yeah. a surprise thing. So we got up there and we did a job on it, and then we come back from there, and then we, then I got word that I'd been grounded. So okay, you uh, had your fifty. It was in the Phil in the Philippines, and now I. Now where were you in the, uh, the the bomb drop? Were you still on the oh, islands, or were no, you back home? I was right home. Oh. Yeah. See, I got out there they, when they grounded me. I hung around quite a while in the Philippines, and uh, I didn't. They had me doing the. Uh, Clerk, work, clerical yeah. work yeah. or stuff, just hanging around until they got a group together, okay. and then they went. Once they got a group together, they sent us all at once to. Uh, they flew us out of there. I forgot where we stopped at, and then they put us on a Liberty ship, mm -hmm. and brought us home on one of a those slow boat from yeah, China. Yeah, it was a long, long ride on oh, that okay. ship, but it was going yeah. in the right direction. Yes, it was. Yeah. You know, so how was it when you got home? What kind of a, a welcome, if you will, or a reception did you have when you got to the state size and then when you got back here in Pittsfield? Well, we, we, we st when they brought us back from overseas, we hit Angel Island, I think they call it, out there in San Francisco. And I think they said it was a little island out there called Angel Island. And we had to check in there. So they examined us, the doctors mm -hmm. did and everything. And then all of this paraphernalia and stuff that I got in front of me now, I had more, but they took some, a lot of it away, so sure. away from me. Stuff you shouldn't have had yeah. to begin with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's be honest about it. Okay. Yeah. No diaries, yeah. nothing. No, yeah. Yeah. But it's so. amazing how many guys just happen to have a, a, yeah. a small yeah. Harvard library with. Yeah. yeah. So they took my gun away. They, I wanted up my 45 and oh. stuff, and all. We all had 45. Oh. See. Side arms. So. Now, so. when you landed, uh, one of the things that w when we came back in. You had an open menu, whatever you wanted. And one of the things that almost every guy wanted was milk and some ice cream. Do yeah. you guys have the same feeling? Not don't really. Don't remember? No, I don't remember. There's one thing I left out, Bob, I oh. forgot to tell you. It was very important. One of the islands, the most uh, active island, too, was Biak. I didn't bring up Biak. From oh. Alandria, we moved to Biak. Mm -hmm. And then from Biak, we moved to the Philippines. Okay. But when we were on Biak, the Japs were very active on Biak. We were the other islands that were really cleaned out pretty well. They didn't bother us too much at all. But on Biak, they did. They used to try to steal stuff from our tents. There was battles oh, going on. down from the hills. Yeah, they were living in a big cave on Biak. It was a hell of a big cave there. And I don't know how many of them lived in it or what. But there were always a, a ruckus at night. You'd go to bed and it, we got orders to sleep with a 45 under our pillow. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said that they're, they're around the place. So at night, they would come out and come down, and, and we were in tents, you know, with a can or yeah. with a screen on them yeah. and a board floor, more or less. But they had to screen just the mosquito a, a netting screen. and all that good stuff. And uh, now and then you'd hear a holler or a scream from somebody. There's a Jap here. He's trying to take my shoes, or this guy was stealing this or that. Yeah. And then they'd be shooting. They'd hear guns popping at night, and, and then they would come out of these caves at. And so. They uh, brought in a, uh, what do you call a mortar, and they were mortaring the opening of the cave with mortar shells, oh, yeah. dropping them, in the, lobbing them right in. into the cave there. And they kept doing that. They were firing them things there. And then they were, had flamethrowers. They were throwing flamethrowers oh, yeah. in there. Burn them out. They had a little tank they put in there, and they were trying to burn them out and everything. 
So that was kind of active right there. That was kind of scary trying oh, yeah. to sleep. He didn't get much sleep in that. I was so nervous I didn't want to sleep <laughs> trying to, with, well, with the gun. Better so. to be awake than not be there. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So that was a, a very active island. That was a very busy island there. So uh, so the, like I say, and the thing was too like like you know the ground crew, all our maintenance men, and the men that worked like you did probably mm -hmm. on the airfields, yeah. they were there. We had thirty. 32 of them, if I remember right. When we were moving to the Philippines, they were loaded up a ship and they put a lot of their things, their working things, I suppose, yeah. and everything on the ship to move them up to the Philippines ahead of us. So when we got there, the mechanics for the airplanes and all that, they went first up to, we had a place up there, I think it was Leyte Bay, at Leyte, up in Leyte, I think it was. And uh, they went in first. So anyhow, we went up after and we got word that the um, kamikaze pilots, yeah. there was a battle going on. <clears throat> and when they were sent up there, it wasn't quite over, but they sent them up there, this uh, the ship. And when they got up there, for some unknown reason, one of the kamikazes there come down and blew up their ship, and we lost 32 men, the ground crew. That was terrible. Yeah. You know, the, the, and uh, they all gone. So when we got up there, there were still little battles going on, and them kazakazis were still diving around on the ships oh, yeah. up there and everything. So there was a, still a battle going on. But we got in safely, and they cleaned them out after a while there. But uh, Yeah, that was the, the worst part. Uh, I'm not stealing your thunder, but uh, on Oki, when they had the, the big kamikaze raids, all the picket ships were getting knocked off. And we were stationed on one side of a hill looking down at what then became Buck Buckner Bay because of the Army General killed there. And uh, they were just like, like, like flies around a garbage yeah. can. Yeah. You, yeah. you couldn't, there was no way around them. And they, one of the guys, uh, if I remember right, uh, said, these gentlemen, question mark, are pledged to die for the emperor. Mm -hmm. He said, let's help them get there quick. Yeah, right. And it mm -hmm. was, that's the old time, but it mm -hmm. was, it was, their war, and that's the way they fought it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and he took these young kids, they, they, you know, that's all he wanted to do is just teach them how to get yeah, the plane get off the ground, there. and that was yeah. all. They didn't care about gas to get, yeah, yeah, pick a target yeah, and go. Yeah. yeah well, yeah. now, let's let's shift gears a little bit, because there's so much stuff that you've got here, medals and what have you. I'd like you to give us a little, maybe two or three minutes, uh, of when you got through the service and came mm -hmm. home, you then went to work where? GE, like most people, or someplace else? When I first come home, it, you got there, there was it. no there was no big blah blah, blah about it. it, it oh, oh, the, the G point one. Well, okay, we'll get it. But uh, anyhow, when I first come home, it was uh, I, I there was no jobs. I, I, before I went over, I was working. Uh, you know, I was working here and there in different places. I worked on a farm for a while I, when I was growing up and all that. And I was in the, my job when I come home. I worked at. Uh, I got a job with a truck driver delivering uh, bales of paper okay. to the paper Payment mills, you know, and all around and everything. And I worked on that for a while, mm -hmm. and then I worked at uh, Eaton's, and uh, then I got a job down to GE, and I was on a maintenance gang in the GE. And then that's where I worked until I got married in the GE, and I got mm -hmm. and, and uh, no the fire department. I'm getting out of that from the GE while I was working in the GE. I worked there about five years, I guess, and uh, I put in an application and took a test for a fire department, and I got I called and I yeah. got on. So that was I, I was on the fire department almost 20 years, and uh, I had to get out with a disability oh. for a heart. Uh, uh, trouble. So I got out of the fire department and that's my life there. I got married and settled yeah. down. That's all. And I got my, my family's over there. My son. In, in, in my the dark. And okay. daughter, now, my we niece. just got a, excuse me, we just got a signal. Uh, we have a, a picture here that uh, Mike brought in. It's one of a few that identify, if you will. This is the Japanese surrender group. Can you explain yeah. to them what that was all about so people will know? <clears throat> It's it's the time that the Jimmy uh, Doolittle led the the surrender from the Japanese. So uh, 
our squadron was picked up to escort the Japanese bombers that the Japanese emperor or a Japanese embassy and the crew came to have a surrender on a battleship. I don't know where it was what the name of it was or what the story was, but we were supposed to escort these uh, Japanese Betty bombers to a certain location, then they were picked up and brought onto this battleship. Mm -hmm. And they picked Jimmy Doolittle to lead the raid, the, the, the mission to bring these Japanese bombers. So they made a way to meet up in the air and then be escorted to this place and told where to land and okay. all that and everything. And our squadron was picked to to escort them. Glide cover. And at that time, too, to protect them because there were still oh, Japanese yeah. uh, fighter planes oh, in yeah. the sky. So they had P-38s and they had other planes escorting this thing. It don't show in the, in the picture there, but it, uh, it's in the background. So that was a story on that. Was in, It tells a whole story. I have it here in the, the whole episode, how mm -hmm. it done, what it started, how it, it was done and everything else. So I, yeah. I can't say the whole, it's too long to read okay. and everything, so. We, we'll have to, have to go by that one right yeah, now. So. But the thing that, that I'd like to remind people of, that uh, Colonel Doolittle was the one that led the first air raid. If air raid on Japan. So tell them about that. That's, a lot yeah. of history gets lost yeah. and people don't know yeah. that. Well, they, uh, Jimmy Doolittle had a plan to, to just bring up the, uh, what do you call it, the people's moral yep, morale in this country because when Japan pulled that surprise attack on us at Pearl Harbor, they, I mean, you know. They so, shot us with our socks off. Yeah. So he wanted to bring up some morale. morale. So he uh, decided that he could take a tw some 25s and go bomb Tokyo. And, and, and uh, they were going to take off from a, a, a aircraft carrier, mm -hmm. and, he's, and a land plane like that has never been done before because <laughs> they weren't made no, it was for quite that. a program. It wasn't made for that. So uh, he, I don't know how many planes it was, five or six was it or something? I, I don't know. remember the number either. Yeah, something like that. But anyhow, well, they all did it, and they all went over and they bombed uh, Tokyo. And uh, it really was an, quite a surprise to the Japs there and everything else. So, well, uh, some of them didn't get it back. Some some uh, uh, landed in Russia, some of the planes and everything else, because they run out of gas yeah. and this and that and everything. It was almost so, a, 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 a kamikaze yeah. <laughs> prelude. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. So that was a story on that, and it was a, quite a thing. Yeah. It was quite a quite But a th uh, I think the, the irony, if you will, of the fate uh, Jimmy Doolittle and company went in on the first road, and he flew cover for these guys at the end. Yeah, so yeah. That capped it off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. Now we we, we maybe don't run out of too much time, but uh, as we were talking, I'd like to uh, bring in some of your awards, medals, and memorabilia that, that mm. back here. Bernie, mm. can you pick all that up and let? Uh, might give us a little quick run through, if you will, starting mm. with your National Guard stuff way over on the left hand mm. side. Mm. Well, that's uh, my outfit, the Yankee Division YD, the 26th Yankee Division. That was, uh, they went over to France and through the Battle of the Bulge and all through that. They were right in the midst of everything, the, that the YD, the Yankee Division. And uh, what's the other ones on there? And our medals are for marksmanship. I mean, uh, the the medals there, the air, the expert medal and the sharpshooter and the different things, and mostly all medals for for marksmanship. Uh -huh. And uh, this is a camp over there in the bottom there. We were over, I think it was uh, Fort Drum over in New York, uh -huh. National Guards there. And uh, that's a picture of when I was up there in the guards and. I don't know what else. And that, the How old about way up in the left-hand corner? Mike, can you pick that one up with a young fellow way just beside the 1937? That's flag? a picture of me with all, uh, uh, probably there we go. showing off all my, my 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 medals there for shooting. 
I was being pretty cocky at that time. <laughs> hey, so. hey, you couldn't if you didn't do it. Okay, yeah. now let's kind of swing a bit to the right. Folks, as you can see, uh, the, the thing that amazes me, and, and I admit that uh, this guy's got me completely buffaloed, but the size of him wearing all of that paraphernalia and all those medals, he just didn't sit around doing nothing. Uh. Let's run through them, if you will, slowly. Starting at the middle there, your Purple Hearts. You kind of glossed over that, but I think people should be aware that uh, you did receive one of those things. Yeah, that's what the one I got for uh, being wounded there at uh, Jefferson Isle. And, uh, of course, all the other ones are the American Campaign and the American Defense Service Medal. She's got them all marked. My daughter has my God, I'm glad she has because oh, yeah. I don't so. And uh, the air medal that had the uh, oak leaf cluster on it, that's, you know, you get those when you're in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And the American Defense Medal and the Asiatic Theater Campaign Medal with three stars uh, over in uh, being in combat. Uh -huh. And the Good Conduct Medal, the Philippine Liberation Medal, because we were up there when they were liberating the Philippines. And that's about it, ain't it? No. Up right there, well, the up. Well, up here, those are, that's my uh, uh, gunner's medal, the uh, wings there. It's, it mm -hmm. might, it, the other one's the same thing. The three of them are, as a matter of fact. And that there's just an Australian hat piece. I mean, I traded one of my hat pieces for one of his. We got, we got to be good buddies oh, with yeah. the Aussies. So that part of that there. And that's the Fifth Air Force, the, the logo they had for oh, that. Yeah. And this is our squadrons there, the Falcons, we were called, the 348. Uh, and they called us the Falcons. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a whole row of Japanese uh, fighter planes, or bombers, I guess, on bombers, on the ground over there. And that yes. was taken up in the Philippines. A picture of that. And this was here where, I don't know, it was the Celebes or the Philippines. They're marked on the back of the pictures mm -hmm. there. We just blew up some uh, ammunition dump there, and that's why the smoke's coming up there. And these are some of the natives that are over there, and I think it was an Am An Espirito Santos. They had the bones in their nose or something. Yeah, as long as they weren't your bones. <laughs> yeah. And this is the railroad track that the train was on that we blew up, and I didn't get a picture of the train uh -huh. there, so it went over that's too great. fast or what, but, and some other pictures are there. And all these are different pictures of, yeah. uh, there's there where they'll get cannon fired. There's a cannon. It, that, that, yeah, the cannon. Sampan or whatever it was. Yeah, and that's what, what the splash is from the cannon shooting it off there. So it's just one big splash. It isn't like a, when you're strafing, you get yeah. a lot of bubble. So he got it near the ship anyhow, but it didn't hit the ship. But It made a big splash. Yeah. So no. that's there. So. It's a kind of a wrap up, Mike. It's a bad word to use, but. Uh, all that you've seen and done, what, what's your reaction? Has your service in the service been a help to you? Was it a positive or a negative? Bob, uh, the thing was, like I say, I had a rough life growing up. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any home, and I was bounced from here to there and this and that, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, something about the service, when you're in the service, you, you're, it's, it feels like home to me, yeah. it did because you meet people and then you get very close and you get associated with people and they're like brothers to you. Oh, yeah. You're, I mean, I was anyhow, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and you, 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 it's like a home, let's put it that way, because you get your meals, you get this, you behave yourself. You, yeah, you yeah well, you've got the good conduct <clears throat> medal. You do what you're told <clears throat> and, and, you, and, yeah. and, and, you, and you're staying in one place. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you're, you're not bounced all and over hell, so. You get a feeling that you're welcome. You, yeah. No matter where you go, if yeah. you, quote, were in, you're yeah. accepted. Yeah. Pure and simple. And you had good times and yeah. you had bad oh, times. Yeah. You oh, had yeah. a lot of good times, too, you know. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of things I wouldn't want to talk about, but I mean, uh, you had good times. You, you, you got your drinking parties, <laughs> I did, and this and that. They have been known once in a while people did have a strong drink. Yeah. yeah. So, no, so. but seriously, have you ever contacted, did you join any outfits like the Legion, VFW, DA? Yeah, I'm a life member of the VFW. Okay. So I'm, I've been a life member for a long time, so. And, uh, and let's have a hope that you have a long life to do, too. Yeah, so. 
other than that, uh, is all I can think of for now. But, uh, well, uh, what, if anything, would you recommend to some of these young guys and gals that uh, if they have well, a choice to make, decide where they want to go? I, I, I would say to go into the service because it is good training and it, it gives you a, a sense of uh, what life is really like. I mean, you should, you know, how you should, you, you do things to you, and, uh, yeah. you know. Uh, it's hard to explain, but I mean, you 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 you, you train your good, and you get good discipline. You get mm -hmm. things that you remember about helping people. They, it's got a lot of things that can oh, yeah. teach you. A lot of things they can teach you, oh, yeah. and they and they treat you good. I mean, oh, yeah. they really do. You know, you don't, you ain't going in there and raise hell or anything. But I mean, if you behave yourself and take orders, you can get a promotion and go up the ladder. And it all builds up. And, and, you're, there's a, and you get your, you know, your vacations, yep. you can take furloughs, yep. as we call them, yep. furloughs, and this and that, and it's a, it's a good life. It really okay. is. I mean, I, uh, but uh, I got out because I, I was, my life was a rough life and everything else, and I was all over hell all the time. And, and uh, when I was going with my, my lady friend at the time, my wife that I did okay. marry, she says, "Let's settle down and make. I'll make a home for you." Okay. So that's the only reason that I, then I got out, and you know, and that was it. So as we said before, buddy, uh, shake. Yeah. And I thank you, and the company uh, thanks you. And I thank and you. Welcome for, home. I want to thank you very much, Bob, oh. Bob Stevens, and, and like I say, and for it's what you're doing, what you're doing, and the whole crew and everybody. I want to thank them personally. And I'm, I thanked them for the last time too. It wasn't their fault what happened or anything. So <laughs> that's a company secret, folks. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, yeah. We thank you for watching and hope that those of you who may be on the cusp will come and join us if you have a story. We're here, we're anxious, and we will do our best to have you make yourself good. Thank you, and come and see us again. Hey,